Y'all, you ever been somewhere where the, everybody's got the same drink koozie? You don't know which one's yours. It's just a pain in the tail. Well, I'm here to uh, bring you a new look and a new design. We're calling this the Yeti Low Baller. Great for any party. Fantastic conversation piece. Typically goes about like this. Hey man, welcome. Beautiful place. Appreciate the invite. Hey man, grab yourself a drink. It's in the Yeti. You need a koozie? No, I brought my own. Perfect. Sweet. What is that? That? Oh, that's just the new Yeti lowballer. What's it made of? You know that thing that's on the lower back end of a sheep or a goat that uh, houses the breeding equipment? You mean like the nut sack? Yeah, that's it. That's, uh, that's a nut sack. Cool. Keeps it stone cold. Talk about a great feel. Super familiar. Man, that is nuts. You went balls out, didn't you? Man, that is really unique. Yep, no two are the same. It's not like they're gonna cost you an arm and a leg. Matter of fact, I got this one under a buck. Y'all, it is not uncommon for me to just do some really, really silly things. And although this seems silly, I think it is really, really cool. I think they turn out neat. They're a fantastic conversation piece. And to be honest with you, it's beautiful. All you need is a nut sack and a Yeti can cooler. Let me show you how I made it. Yep, there's finally a gift for the guy or the gal in your life that has everything. Step one, you wanna skin those nuts out of there. Now they're sitting in there in their own little kind of like sleeve, if you will. To skin them, you just kind of invert them like you're rolling a pair of socks. And then you just wanna touch your knife right where you see sort of that spider webbing effect where you're seeing the membrane attached to the inside of the hide. Just separate that nice and easy. These will absolutely pull out, but this is a really good example of seeing where to touch your knife when you're actually skinning. So skin out both testes. So you have this empty sack. From here, I like to stretch it over like a piece of lumber, a log, whatever. Just something where you can use both hands in the skinning process and not one hand holding the sack, if you will. This next step here is referred to as the fleshing, where we're trying to get rid of any of the excess meat or fat or anything that isn't just that smooth inside leather hide piece, right? This isn't the exact knife to use, but it's what I got and it's what I use for everything. So just be delicate. We're trying not to poke a hole, but you slide your knife down at an angle to where you're removing all that membrane, all the fat, anything that's in there. Sometimes I'll even take like a little bit of uh, dry borax or something just to get it a little bit gritty so I can pull and remove all that greasy stuff on there. This is the most delicate, probably the hardest part of this whole process. My recommendation here is just to take your time and just work your way through it because what you do here really helps the end result. It's kind of like prepping a wall before you paint it. The better you do on the prep, the better the tan. Now I have found through the years, and I mean years of putting these together, that the Yeti Rambler Can Insulator is the best shape for a sheep or a goat nut sack. How many times have I said that this week? Anyway, what I'm doing here is I'm using a product that I call an instant preserve or an instant tan. I will find what it's actually called and put the link in the description, but I buy it from Van Dyke's Taxidermy and essentially it pulls all the moisture out of the hide and makes it like hard as a stone. No pun intended for all that stuff we're dealing with. But what I'm doing is I coat it on every inch of that scrow I slide the can inside, I pull it as tight as I can, and then I just let it dry in place. Now I'm gonna take it in the house and I'm gonna put a zip tie around the top to hold it nice and firm there, and then I'm gonna cut it so it has a place to get rid of the moisture. Once that's done, we'll pick it up in a couple of days for the final cut around the rim so we can slide the top of the can koozie on it. We'll do a little bit of color work around the cut mark. A little shampoo and conditioner. We're gonna make this thing super clean. These are so cool. All right, so fast forward 24 hours. This thing's been sitting in front of a fan in a pretty warm environment. 
It's puked most of the moisture out and I can feel it really firming up, much, much more solid than it was when I first started. On the can insulator, there's a black rim that kind of screws and holds the can in place. I want the edge of this nut sack to be right where it meets that black rim. So I'm gonna take my knife and I'm just gonna cut very delicately right where I can feel that stainless roll into that indentation. This is no science and this is handcrafted stuff. That's how I would advertise it. So it's not gonna be perfect. I don't expect it to be perfect. I cut my rim off there, I check it, and then I take a wet rag and I clean up all my loose uh, instatant, if you will. I wipe the hide down real well, and then I set it right back in front of that fan to dry another day or so. The last little step here, now that it's good and dry, is I put a piece of tape around that rim, and then I grab one of those wood furniture markers, grab the right color, and I color where that leather meets the hide, because it turns kind of white, and it's a little bit too strong of a contrast there. So I just color that so it blends nice and easy. Then I just take a wet soapy rag, and I wash the outside of that koozie, just to get everything off all that extra cure and tan, all that stuff, make it nice and clean. You can go as far as even putting beard oil on this thing if you want it to look really cool. Just giving it that finished aesthetic look. Y'all, just wrapping up this film, it was super, super fun to make. I've been doing these for years and years and years. I think this is one of the coolest gifts to give someone. For example, uh, years ago, I did a hunt, uh, an elk hunt with Uncle Bud on the Tejon Ranch and he shoulder mounted it so we saved that uh, nut sack and built him a koozie. Just a fun memento. Did the same thing with my buddy Caleb down there in Texas. Uh, I've done tons of them. My father has them. You can look at it as a way to practice fleshing. You can look at it as a way to practice uh, like poor man's tanning. You could just think, hey, this is a great stocking stuffer. If you have the resource, if you got an animal, this piece is extra. It doesn't even have to fit over a can. I do them over mason jars. I do them over all kinds of different stuff. I put ivories in them. I put porcupine quills in them. I put rattlesnake rattles in there, empty bullets, shell casings. I love this stuff, and I think you probably do too, somewhere deep down inside. Anyway, thank you like always for watching. Till next time, be kind to one another.